Okay, we have returned, and we're going to start the next uh, time period. Case 21, Anchors Away. Everyone, get ready to time jump. Now that we've gotten the time machine back from the evil Ptolemy regime, this is our only chance to escape the altered present. And go back in time to fix the past. Before the Ptolemy's faithful agent Am Amon changed history in their favor and created a huge oppressive empire where our world should be. We know they really grew in power in the 1700s, so that's where we need to go. Time jump in three, two, one, go! So, Matthew, we've landed on Brava Island in Cape Verde at the beginning of the 18th century. Orlando did an amazing job on these British privateer uniforms for us. We'll blend right in. We're supposed to be privateers? You mean like pirates? How exciting. Not pirates, exactly. Privateers are hired by the British government to protect their commercial ships from attack. Well, that should come in handy, since we're here to make sure the Ptolemies don't take over the trade routes, and England was the strongest presence in the Caribbean at the time. All we need to do is figure out exactly how Amon seized those trade routes for the Ptolemies, and undo it. Piece of cake. Perhaps not easy, but investigation is what we do best. We can start by exploring this port, to see what we can find out from the people here. Matthew, let's check out the port. Of course, now the only time I ever hear the term privateer is in is in supercross racing. Privateer, in this case, it's like another term for a pirate. And of course, in the world of motocross, a privateer is, per is a person who works on his own bike and drives to the races, pays the entry fees and all. That man is dead. His throat was slit open. And look, his hands and feet are bound with rope. Well, this is great. We've just arrived and we've already found a murder. His throat was slit, but there's not a lot of blood around the body. Do you think he could have been moved here after the murder? You're right. Let's stick to the clues in front of us. Hmm, there's a button missing from his coat. It must have been torn off in the struggle. I see here that his uniform suggests he's in the British Navy. You're right. This epaulette looks like it could be a good first clue. It probably belongs to another member of the British Navy. Maybe they knew our victim. The symbols on epaulettes show a person's rank. It, if we examine the symbols, we'll find out whose it is. Well, Matthew, what better way to gain our footing in this new time and place than solving a murder? It's time to get to work. get some more stars so sit tight everybody <clears throat> all right I got myself up to six stars so let's get let's examine this Paulette Shadrach. 
Matthew, the symbols on the epaulette you found near the victim are used to designate a captain in the British Navy. It looks like a Captain El Shadrach came through Brava Island in 1719 on a ship, the HMS Highmore. Let's seek out the captain and see what he can tell us about the victim. Privateers, shouldn't you be on your ship? Oh, uh, we've been instructed to stay on the island for now to ensure everything is in order here. Well, I suppose you shall need all the protection we can muster. Word is there are pirates about. Actually, Captain, it's funny you should mention protection. We found a member of your crew with his throat slit open on the port. That must be Barnabas Diker. He was the only one absent from the crew's midday meal. You say he was murdered? Oh, what are we going to do without a gunner aboard the HMS Highmore? I cannot say Diker was the best gunner I have ever had on board, but he got us out of a pickle or two. This is terrible news. I shall have words sent back to Officer Diker's family at once. Thank you for notifying me of his death. Captain, considering Officer Diker was a member of your crew, would you mind if we inspected the HMS Highmore? By all means, go right ahead, privateers. There's a bloody brush on the deck, and there's still some blood around it. it. Looks like someone's in a hasty cleaning job. You're right, Matthew. There is suspiciously little blood around the victim's body, and we know that this was his ship. What if he was killed right here? We should analyze the sample from this brush and see if it was used by the killer to cover their tracks. Good idea, Matthew. Since the victim was the ship's gunner, we could take a closer look at these cannonballs. And I'm not sure what this broken thing is, but putting it back together could prove helpful. Gotta get more stars. Sit tight, everybody. Okay, now I got myself up to 20 stars. I did a lot of work. So now, let's put that work to use. Handkerchief. Since our victim was the gunner here on the HMS Highmore, it was smart to inspect this pile of cannonballs. There was a handkerchief in it. Looks like the hanky belongs to an F. Humphrey. Felix Humphrey. Okay. Let's seek out Mr. Humphrey and see what he can tell us about the victim. There's what he looks like. He looks like he might have committed the murder. Mr. Humphrey, are you a member of the crew here on the HMS Highmore? I am the surgeon on this ship, yes. What do you need? Amputation, bloodletting, lance a blister or boil? No thank you, none of that. I'm afraid your shipmate, Officer Barnabas Diker, was found on the port with his throat slit open. He was murdered, but who will keep us safe from the pirates? There, there are pirates everywhere. I once heard they caught a man head to toe and peeled him like a bloody banana. Ah yes, pirates. Captain Shadrach mentioned them too. Anyway, what can you tell us about Officer Diker? Between the rocking of the ship and the nerves of the patients, Barnabas lent an extra set of hands <coughs> that proved helpful during some of my more difficult procedures. 
I do not know who could have done this terrible thing, but I'm afeard of what it could mean for the rest of us. Bloody scrub brush may answer the question of where the victim was killed. Let's get the sample you collected to the lab. Torn canvas. We'll get the rest of the stars tomorrow. This is a painted portrait of the victim. It looks like this other guy is a close friend of his. The back of the portrait says his name is Jorge de la Cruz. If this Jorge is somewhere around here, we should speak with him. Jorge de la Cruz has to say. Mr. de la Cruz, we're investigating the murder of Barnabas Diker. We understand you knew him. Oh, this is terrible news. Now there is no chance for reconciliation. Barney and I were in the British Navy together and we grew very close. We always conceived a way to be placed together in our cruise. Then what happened? I left. I couldn't stand the oppressive discipline of the Navy. Barney stayed on and we fell out of contact. But when I heard the HMS Highmore was stopping in Cape Verde, I sought him out, hoping to reunite. I presented him with this portrait painted of us by a fellow officer, and Barnabas tore it to pieces. My old friend had no desire to know me anymore, and now he's dead. Forever we remain estranged. That always is that always reeks. So I'll see you guys when both of these are finished. And for now, this is Matthew. I'll see you all again. Okay, we are back. Let's get the results of the autopsy from Janice. What are the chances, Matthew? We land back in the past and not even a half hour passes before you stumble on a dead body. It's like the Age of Sail knew we were coming. Good thing this is what we do best. What did you learn from examining the body? Well, by the looks of your victim's tied hands and ankles, this murder wasn't improvised. They slit his throat with a thin, sharp blade, but they left no further evidence on his clothes or body. However, I can tell you that I had a doozy of a time getting those ropes off of him. When it comes to knots, your killer knows what they're doing. Matthew, we'll show the killer a thing or two about getting tied up. Exciting to be here in the age of sail, Matthew. I remember my days as a youngster, sailing on my father's yacht. The salt on the air, cri the crisp flaps, the crisp flap of the sails. 
the smell of spilled blood. Matthew took that blood sample from a scrub brush on the, on the deck of the victim's ship. Well, it's definitely the victim's blood, which means it was your killer who handled the brush. But I found something else that could be helpful. There were traces of grease that came from salt pork the killer had on their hands when they used the scrub brush. Salt pork is basically pork belly covered and stored in salt to keep it preserved for a long time. And as such, it was a staple food for sailors in this era. Of course, I checked with Janice. No salt pork in the victim's system, so your killer eats salt pork. Once we find their identity, Matthew, we'll make sure our killer is well preserved, too. Matthew, we come to Cape Verde during this, the age of sail to find out how the Egyptian trading company gained a monopoly on the trade routes. But we found a British naval officer with his wrist tied and his throat slit. Evidence suggests that Diker was actually murdered on the deck of on the deck of the HMS Highmore, and then his body was moved onto the port. We met Diker's captain, who told us that despite not being the strongest link on the ship, Diker proved his worth as a gunner. There's also the HMS Highmore surgeon Felix, who believes pirates are responsible for the murder. Then there was Diker's old friend Jorge, who left the Navy to live on his own terms, and who was shunned by Diker when he came to rekindle their friendship. Matthew, you've got to try some of this grog stuff. It's delish. Jack, are you drunk? Only a li little, but I was talking to a guy at the t tavern and I learned some stuff about your victims where, where the place he was before he got killed. Oh, Archer, you SOB. I'll see you guys for chapter two. Don't go anywhere. All right, we have come back. Let's start chapter two of Anchors Away. We last left off. I only had a couple of drinks. Okay, maybe half a dozen. But it was to, to celebrate our escape from that horrible, horrible altered present. But I was talking to a guy at the t tavern and I learned some stuff about your victims where, where uh, the place he was before he got killed. Apparently the grub, uh, the governor had a party at his plantation house last night. The victim and his crewmates were there. Interesting. If the victim was at the party, it's possible the killer was too. Matthew, we gotta check out the governor's house. Let's go. Your Excellency, we're investigating the murder of... Privateers, I cannot speak with you now. There is a problem of the utmost importance afoot. My collection of rare exotic butterflies has escaped. Years of hunting and collecting, gone in a flicker of colorful wings. I can do nothing else, including speak with you until they are safely returned to their confinement. Well, I suppose you can help you with that. Come on, Matthew, let's take a look around for those butterflies. And if you see something of interest to our case, don't hesitate to pick it up.
There it is. Okay, and also... There we go. Matthew, that food tray is covered with beautiful butterflies. They must be attracted to the leftover sweets from last night's party. Those have to be the escaped exotic butterflies from the governor's collection. We'll have to collect them very carefully before they finish the crumbs and fly away. Oh, and this is the dance card. Women used to carry these at parties as a cued list of men to dance with during the party. Imagine living in an era where this is a thing between Kai and Theo, my dance card's already full. The names inside are faded. Let's recover them and see who else was at this party with the victim. And this leather book is interesting, Matthew. The cover says HMS, but the rest of it is worn away. Let's take a closer look. take the silver tray right away even though we technically have no time limit Fantastic, Matthew! You've captured the governor's butterflies! Let's get them back to him, and hopefully he'll be prepared to speak with us about the murder. Uriah Haddonfield. Oh, thank you, privateers, for recapturing my butterflies. How can I repay you? Please, tell us what you know about Officer Barnabas Diker of the HMS Highmore. We understand he was here at your party last night. Ah, yes, that nincompoop. He drank most of the champagne we had shipped in from France for the occasion and made quite a fool of himself by the end of the night. We found Officer Diker earlier today with his throat slashed open. Oh, goodness. I must say I am grateful that did not occur here at my home. What an awful mess that must have been. I suppose the HMS Highmore will be searching for a replacement gunner. I do hope for their sake they find one who is less of a souse. I'm afraid that is all I know about this matter. I thank you again for returning my butterflies. Please excuse me. I must return them to their terraria. more. Mmm, missed out on the nine. Matthew, the leather book you found says HMS Highmore on the cover. This must be the logbook from the victim's ship. There's too much material here to go through ourselves, so we should send it to Marina to see if there's anything relevant to our investigation.
pretty long list. Matthew, this dance card belongs to an Isadora Haddonfield. She must be the governor's daughter. And it looks like Isadora danced quite a few times with Barnabas during the party. We should ask Isadora if she noticed anything amiss during, during all that time spent with the victim. Miss Haddonfield, we'd like to ask you some questions. Ooh, I was unaware they allowed women to serve as privateers. You look quite smart in that uniform. Thank you, Miss Haddonfield. That is sweet of you to say. Uh, we see that you danced with Barnabas Diker last night. Ah, yes. We had just made each other's acquaintance. He regaled me with tales from the high seas, visits to distant lands, encounters with pirates, matters of life and death. I lent him a string for my bodice, and he taught me to tie some of the most important knots for a sailor to know. Why do you ask? Well, I'm sorry to say we found him murdered at the port earlier today. Oh dear, how heartbreaking to think such, a, such an exciting life was brought to such an early end. May he rest in peace. That'll do. I'll see you guys. Okay, we are back. Let's get the results of the book from Marina. Marina, did you find anything useful in the HMS Highmore's logbook? Yes. Captain Shadrach's day-to-day -day record lists the number of incidents wherein he believed the victim was trying to kill him. Listen, the men fired at seagulls for sport. In following one such bird, Barnabas swung his barrel to me and held it there. A look in his eye I cannot put into words. So is that true? Did the victim have it in for the captain? I'm not convinced of that. None of the situations include a clear threat. The pattern I see in the captain's thinking is a subtle case of delusional disorder. In the last entry he says, I have no proof beyond what I have seen, but Diker has painted a target upon my face, which no amount of soap can remove. Wow, do you think the captain's delusions could have driven him to murder? It's a distinct possibility. We've seen people kill for less. Well, looks like we'd better take a closer look at Captain Shadrach. Captain, we found your logbook. Why didn't you mention your suspicions about Officer Diker before? You wouldn't have believed me to be his murderer. You would have believed me to be his murderer. Well, the fact that you kept it a secret makes you even more suspicious. What would I gain from killing him after arriving at port? Best to tie a barrel to his ankle with a bowline knot and push him into the open sea. I did think about it, I admit. That weasel wanted to replace me as captain of the Highmore. I know it. His eyes fired daggers every time they met mine. I took to eating my salt pork in my private quarters for fear he would poison it. But I assure you, privateers, I did not murder a member of my crew. I want as badly as you do to put the question of Officer Diker's murder to rest. Captain, we hope your fears about Diker do not push you to extremes. And speaking of the ship, Matthew, I believe this warrants another look around.
Matthew, what do you suppose this wooden box is for? You're right, it says Felix Humphrey on it, so it belongs to the ship's surgeon. I agree, let's get it open and see if there's anything helpful inside. And if the murder happened here on the ship, as we suspect, Matthew, this crate is the perfect place to hide evidence. Let's dig in. Matthew, here are all of the surgeon's medical tools, but what is that torn paper about? We should restore it. That paper you found in the surgeon's box is a debt acknowledgement form. Sounds like some kind of IOU. It says, I, Felix Humphrey, admit in the face of defeat that I owe a debt of 50 pounds sterling to my victor and whist, one Barnabas Diker. Whoa, Matthew, I just did the conversion, and apparently 50 pounds sterling in 1719 was equivalent to $15,000 in 2029. That's a lot of money. You're right. Felix didn't sign it, and it was torn to pieces. Seems he disagreed about this debt to the victim. Let's see what Felix has to say about this. Dr. Humphrey, we understand you owed Officer Diker quite a bit of money. Yes, I lost multiple games of whist against Barnabas, but he kept making crazier and crazier bets. Well, I planned to call him out on his little game and, he, and claimed I'd match his bets, but I lost every hand and wound up 50 pounds in the negative. My entire savings, gone. Everyone on the ship knows I've been saving my money for a long time, preparing to start a surgical practice on dry land and escape this infernal bunk, infernal hunk of driftwood. Without that money, all I have left are my tools, the clothes on my back, and my remaining salt pork rations. And there was no way to find an accord between you? Barnabas refused, after I'd been like a mentor to him. I was the one who taught him to tie knots. Doctor, if we discover you murdered Barnabas to avoid paying your debt, you'll get your wish of staying on dry land in prison. fishing net, a bloody fish net. Matthew, there's a fish net in this crate and it's got blood on it. Oh, good on. There's the button that was missing from Diker's jacket. We did find evidence the murder was committed on the ship deck. This must be what the killer used to move the body to the port. There's only one way to find out. Let's send this net to the lab. Oh, 
12 hours. I'll see you guys when this is done. Okay, we have come back. Let's get the results of the fishnet. <clears throat> Theo, is Matthew's hunch correct? Did the killer use the fishnet to drag Diker from the crime scene to the port? Yes. On top of this, on top of his button, which you already spotted, the blood on the net was also the victim's. So there was a lot of the victim tangled up in that clue. But did the killer leave anything behind? Well, in two places. Where the killer must have held the net, I found traces of cochlearia. Cochlearia was also known as scurvy grass and was commonly used to treat cases of scurvy on the high seas. <clears throat> scurvy is a disease caused by a deficiency of vitamin C, which cochlearia can cure. So finding it here, Matthew, tells me that your killer has scurvy. Well, when we catch the killer, they'll get plenty of vitamin C, but the C stands for cell. There have been some interesting developments in the mystery of this murdered mariner, Matthew. We've gathered some polarizing opinions of him. The governor said he was a champagne guzzling souse, but the governor's daughter seems charmed by him. And here on his ship, the victim was firm about taking Felix's life savings after their whist game. While Captain Ellis was sure the victim was actively trying to kill him. We'll need some more time to gather clues before we... Anchors away! <coughs> Privateers, unless you launch to see the West Indies, I suggest you disembark immediately. <coughs> Matthew, this ship is leaving port! <coughs> I'll see you guys in chapter three. And we return. Let's start chapter three of Anchors Away. We just found out that this ship is about to be docked. Or, uh... <clears throat> leaving port. Matthew, they're pulling up the anchor. Is this boat leaving port? Privateers, unless you launch to see the West Indies, I suggest you disembark immediately. You can't set sail in the middle of a murder investigation. The sea waits for no one. It'll have to wait for you. Drop anchor immediately or we'll report this obstruction to the governor. So be it. Drop anchor. But you had better act fast. We're due at port in one week. That was close, Matthew. Now while we bought ourselves some time, let's go do another quick sweep of the governor's veranda for anything we might have missed. So what do we have in the way of clues this time? Anything pertaining to our victim? Ah, this tiny box is for the victim. It's beautiful, but also a little ominous. <clears throat> I wonder what's inside. Let's open it. And you found this scroll, Matthew. The heading says, Interdiction of Presence. Is this like an old-fashioned restraining order? But there's powder spilled all over it. Let's clean it up. Come on, Matthew, let's get cracking on these clues.
Got it. Oh my. Awesome, Matthew. You got the box open and... Ah! A human finger! But who would give the victim a severed human finger? And why? Let's get this to Janice for examination pronto. Stained scroll. Now that you cleared off that color powder, we can read more of the scroll. It says, Someone is expelled from the Brava Island port, and future presence there will result in criminal charges. Wow, that's serious. But there's ink spilled on the name. Who do you think this was written for? <clears throat> You're right. Testing the powder you collected from it might tell us more. collector from the scroll of scales from butterfly wings. That means the governor, who is a butterfly collecting fanatic, wrote this decree. Decree. You're right. Something tells me this interdiction relates to our victim. Let's go talk to the governor. Your Excellency, we found out you expelled someone from this port. Who was... Who else? Diker, that souse? In the wake of his misbehavior at your party? If only. The other day I overheard Captain Shadrach and the surgeon discussing Diker as we all underwent our scurvy treatments together. They mentioned Diker was romancing some girl and from their description I recognized my own Isadora. Diker was romantically involved with Isadora? Yes, but not if I had anything to say about it. The man was an iron-headed ne'er-do-well. I immediately wrote that decree to prevent Diker from ever coming to our port again. He would never touch my daughter. Well, hopefully you didn't take more drastic measures, sir. And I'm afraid we'll need to talk to your daughter about all this. Field. We know you were romantically involved with Officer Diker. Why didn't you tell us this before? Because it isn't true. It wasn't Barnabas I cared about. It's the sea. I wanted to sail away from here since I was a child. I want to taste that freedom to eat salt pork and feel the wind in my face. Like my father's caged butterflies, I too long for freedom. During my dances with Barnabas, I thought I'd managed to convince him to take me away to the sea with him. What? You were going to run away from home and stow away on his ship? That's why I said I thought I convinced him. I was planning my serious escape, but he believed it was a mere flirtation. He didn't think I wanted to become a stowaway. So when I arrived on his ship, he panicked and refused to take me. The coward? The scoundrel? 
Wow, that's a lot to take in. But we hope he didn't lash out after his betrayal. Prison time would make it even harder to leave this island. I'll see you guys when the finger in the box has done, has finished. So for now, this is Matthew. See you soon. Okay, we are back. Let's get the results of the finger in the box. Matthew, this is the real deal. What a cool clue. I don't know that I'd call it cool, Janice, but yeah, that's a real finger. Any idea whose it was? Well, I'm guessing you haven't met anyone who was short a finger, or you would have told me. So no, I don't know. Instead, I focus on who might have sent it. I got a good, I got a pretty good DNA sample off the box itself. That compared it to samples I took from the other clues you brought in. And I got a match on the portrait you found. That must be Jorge de la Cruz's DNA. He's the only one who touched that portrait besides us and the victim. But why on earth would Jorge give a severed finger to his estranged friend? And whose finger was it in the first place? Let's go grill Jorge about this, Matthew. Mr. Dela Cruz, explain this little gift you gave to Barnabas. Oh, that was merely a ploy to scare Barney. Well, I would assume it worked. It's not every day you see a finger in a box. Why did you want to scare him so bad? There is more to the story of Barney and me going our separate ways. You, you see, when I left the Navy and became a pirate... <coughs> Wait, you're a pirate? Well, I can see how that wouldn't have gone over well with Diker. Er, I mean, I didn't mean to tell you that. Don't come after me. I've got no trouble with you people, whatever Diker thought. My best friend Barney turned on me as soon as he realized what I'd become. Declared I had to die. I had to scare him away, so I sent him that warning. So, where did you get the finger? Our rigger got his finger caught in, the, in a figure eight knot while hoisting a sail and the rope ripped it from his hand. Reattachment was impossible, so I asked if he permitted I keep it. The perils of the sea are great enough, even without a naval fleet on your heels. I myself am suffering a terrible bout of scurvy at the moment. I've got a remedy I'm adding to my salted pork, but I haven't seen the benefits just yet. Mr. Dela Cruz, we won't take you in for piracy. We have other concerns at the moment. But if we find out you killed Barney, you will regret it. Well, our second sweep here at the governor's house was very enlightening. First of all, Mr. Dela Cruz is a pirate with a grudge against Barnabas. Then there's Governor Haddonfield, who believes Barnab who believed Barnabas Barnabas was trying to romance his daughter. While Isadora only wanted Barnabas to help her escape her cloister life here on her father's plantation. But her dreams were dashed against the rocks when Barnabas refused. Could she have been the one to do him in? You're right. There's still some information we're lacking in this case. Let's do another sweep of the crime scene before Captain Shadrach tries to set sail again.
Matthew. This hat looks like it belongs to someone in the British Navy. You're right. The victim wasn't wearing a hat when we found him. It must be his. There's a stain on it. It could have been put there by our killer while they were moving the body. Hmm, do we have lots of luck searching through trash bins? If you think the same goes for buckets of fish. Hmm, we do have lots of luck for lots of luck searching through trash bins. If you think the same goes for buckets of fish, go for it. We'll get to the bottom of this murder in no time and throw the killer in Davy Jones' locker. Moment, folks. Okay, I got myself four of the five stars there. I'm going to work on that last one later. Now let's get this sample from the victim's hat to the lab. found a straight razor in that fish bucket. And look, the blade is clean, except this crusty bit of blood near the hilt. Let's send it to Janice to see if it's our murder weapon. Okay, taking a look at our quick suspect before we go. So... Captain Shadrach is possible. So is Felix Humphrey. So is Jorge de la Cruz. It's not Isadora Haddonfield. And it's definitely, it's definitely not Uriah Haddonfield. So it's either the Captain, Felix Humphrey, or Jorge de la Cruz. So for now, we're going to find out whose it is. So for now, I'll see y'all soon. And we're back. Let's get the results of the sticky substance first from Theo. Hey Theo, what can you tell us about the substance Matthew collected from the victim's hat? Well, the substance was mostly composed of spermacity, which is a fatty, oily substance created in a gland in a sperm whale's head. At this point in history, spermacity was used in leather work, as well as to make everything from ointment to candles. Any chance you could narrow it down? Yes, I also found peppermint extract mixed in, which tells me that the substance was of cosmetic use, more specifically a wax for mustaches or facial hair. I saw that your victim was clean shaven when he died, so obviously he's not the one who left this wax on his hat. Which means, Matthew, your killer is the one who has facial hair. One thing's for sure, Matthew, having facial hair won't shave this killer from going to prison. This straight razor you found in the bucket of fish is definitely a murder weapon. The killer clearly tried to clean the blade, but accidentally left a smudge of the victim's blood on the hilt. Well, that's grisly, but fantastic news. Were, were you able to learn anything else from it? I did get some skin cells from the handle, but not enough to get an ID. I did find out, however, that your killer has green eyes. You heard her, Matthew. We're on the lookout for a killer with eyes as green as the sea itself. Matthew, we've got enough information to catch Officer Diker's killer. 
They better batten down the hatches, because we're coming for them. Captain Shadrach. No, it's not Jorge de la Cruz. Felix Humphrey, you are under arrest for the murder of Officer Barnabas Diker. Murder? Privateers, I am the HMS Highmore Surgeon. I take this accusation as an unfortunate joke on my profession. No jokes. This is a very real accusation of murder. We know you bound his hands and legs, then slit his throat with a straight razor. Then you wrapped Diker in a fishnet and dragged him onto the port. And to cover your tracks, you hid the fishnet and scrubbed his blood from the deck. You have to understand, it was an accident. You see, as the ship's surgeon, I naturally also serve as the ship's barber. When Barnabas returned from the governor's party last night, he was very drunk and decided he wanted to shave. He didn't have much in the way of facial hair, but I obliged, hoping doing the favor might help him overlook the debt he claimed I owed. But the boat rocked some against the port, and his intoxication only made it worse. Then the blade slipped and opened his throat. I could tell immediately the cut was too deep to be mended, and the man died within seconds. And then you did your best to hide the incriminating evidence. Well, I guess your best wasn't good enough. Please have mercy on me. I only try to do good. If people heard of this mistake, my career would be finished. We'll have to see what your captain has to say about all this. You're under arrest. Officer Humphrey, mur murder of a shipmate bears a heavy price in the Royal Navy. Please, Captain, have mercy on me. It was an accident. I'll be ruined. I have deliberated on this, and I will be inclined to grant you clemency, given the accidental circumstances of Officer Diker's murder. Oh, thank you, Captain. I feel... However, while the murder was accidental, your attempts to conceal it were deliberately ex executed. For that, you cannot be trusted and must face consequences. You will be flogged for your crime and are hereby removed from the crew of the HMS Highmore. You are free to seek assignment on another ship, but you may never set foot on my ship again. Now disembark. Thank you, my Captain, for your clemency. Wow, Matthew, I hadn't expected Diker's murder was an accident, just a slip while Felix gave him a shave. I guess Felix got his wish to stay on dry land, but then there's the flogging. Now that that's wrapped up, we've got to find ourselves a crew. If we're to have any hope of stopping the Ptolemy monopoly on the trade routes, then the original timeline will be restored and keep the altered present from happening. But let's get going before another murder falls at our feet. We'll see you guys for Sink or Swim 1-5. See y'all soon. All right, let's start Sink or Swim 1-5. <clears throat> wow, Matthew, I still can't believe we're in the age of sail. Escaping the altar present was thrilling enough, but now we're surrounded by sailors and pirates. So exciting. Don't let it distract you from our purpose. We came here to prevent the Ptolemies altering the timeline and rising to power. We know monopolizing the trade routes is what gave them the most influence and riches, so we had to find a way to stop that from happening. 
The thing is, we shouldn't use our time machine to get around. If anyone followed us here to the age of sail, they could ping the location of the machine and find us. Yeah, Amon's probably, probably looking for us as we speak. That's why we've got to move around by ship. But we don't know how to sail. Before any self-respecting captain will take us aboard, we've got to make ourselves seaworthy. Because of my yachting experience, I can give the team a crash course. Matthew, come to my lab when you've got a moment. You know, Matthew, we could learn more about the trade routes by talking to Governor Haddonfield. After all, he has ties to the East India Company. Great, great idea. Matthew, you and Jack go talk to the governor, and I'll be here when you're ready to see Theo. I may not have appreciated Diker, but I appreciate your catching his killer nonetheless. Good show. Yes, but our work here on Brava Island isn't finished. We understand you're affiliated with the East India Company. Indeed I am. We are the second biggest power in the trade routes between England, Africa, and the West Indies. Surpassed only by the French, but not for long. What about other companies, say like from Egypt for instance? Yes, the Egyptian Trading Company has been seeking a foothold here. They hope to get more ports and plantations at the auction. The French king is selling most of France's assets. But I am positive we will win the auction lots, putting our com competitors at a severe disadvantage. Yes, it sounds like a pretty important event. When and where will the auction be held? It was recently rescheduled, and I do not recall the new date. I know the auction will be held in Tortuga. There is a notice somewhere around here. We're happy to search for it. Matthew, let's get to it. the notice Governor Haddonfield mentioned about the auction, but the text is worn away. We'll have to recover the text. the notice about the upcoming auction. Whoever wins those plantations and ports from France will control the produce as well as the import and export of the produce. That's a lot of power. It says the auction will take place at the Severina Estate on Tortuga Monday the 7th of August. That's a month from now. Let's take this to Orlando to figure out how we can get to this thing. Matthew, 
Matthew, as I told you, I used to sail with my family, so I thought I could give the rest of the team a few lessons to become proper sailors. I actually found a small discarded sloop at the port. It's too beat up to risk going out to sea, but we can use it for sailing practice. Oh, cool. I'm totally on board. The sloop needs some fixing up before we can take it out for a spin, though. It needs a sail and some rope. Surely we can find those things around the port, Matthew. Let's go take a look. You found some rope. How about a sail? Ah, yes. This torn sail will be perfect. We just have to piece it back together. Matthew, the sail should work now, and we've got the rope. Let's head back to Theo. And we're going to see how long this this nine hours or six. No, it's also six. Okay. I'll see you guys when this is done. So for now, this is Matthew. I'll see you all soon. Okay, we are back. Let's get the results of the sail first. Hey Theo, you've got the supplies and we're ready for our sailing lesson. Perfect! Kai is just putting the finishing touches on our training vessel to make sure the hull is properly sealed. In the meantime, we can work on getting down the basic na nautical terms. Hmm, I know that the front of the boat is called the bow, the back is the stern. Well done, darling, and moving toward the bo bow of the boat, it's fore or forward. Toward the back is going aft. How about if someone tells you to go starboard? I know this, starboard is the right side. Correct, starboard is right and port is left. I think you guys are all set. I'll go check on the boat and we'll see you guys later when you're ready to take her out. Orlando, do you know how we can get to this auction? Well, we've got a month to get there, and it's on Tortuga Island in the West Indies. I measured the distance from where we are in Cape Verde to Tortuga Island. Assuming we can get on a ship, the entire journey will take us two and a half weeks, sailing at a constant speed of eight knots, basically nine miles per hour. Nine miles per hour? You know, Orlando, we've got a time machine. We could just... You know we can't take that risk. Remember what Kai said about Ptolemy agents tracking us down? We'll require a big ship with a full crew. 
I'm not sure where to get that, but maybe you could see with the governor about getting on an East India Company ship. Good idea, Orlando. Matthew, let's hope the governor is willing to help us. Your Excellence, the auction you spoke of is in a month, and it's very important that we be there. But we, uh, haven't been assigned a ship, and soon we'll be too late. Oh yes, you'll need to leave very soon if you are to make it in time. The voyage takes nearly three weeks. I do believe Captain Shadrach is preparing to depart very soon. Perhaps you could speak with him about room aboard his vessel. But I must warn you, the captain is a no-nonsense sort of fellow. Passage will be granted only if you work aboard the ship with everyone else. Well, we are a no-nonsense sort of team. Good luck, privateers. Oh, and do please take some, some of this food. It is from last night's party, and I haven't the heart to throw it out. Well, we got some definitive intel on the Ptolemy's takeover of the trade routes. We have to get to Tortuga so we can stop them from buying everything in the auction. It's happening in a month, and we need to sail there. Speaking of sailing, I heard Theo and Kaya prepped a boat to teach us some sailing basics. Yes, actually they should be ready for us now. Matthew, let's head out to the boat. Alright Matthew, ready to continue your sailing training? Aye aye, Captain. Excellent, I think the next most important thing to learn is how to turn the ship. Don't you just turn the steering wheel? Well, on a sailboat, it's not that simple. We've also got to change the position of the sails, so they'll still catch the wind. So Matthew, when I shall come about, we'll turn the boat starboard and secure all the sails port side. And Kai, make sure the boom of the mainsail doesn't hit you in the head when it swings past. Sure thing. Three, two, one, come about. Beautiful, Matthew. Beautiful. Matthew, I think we're ready to approach Captain Shadrach about joining his crew. Captain, we have something to discuss with. Privateers, I cannot see you now. I have a well of a toothache and it must be seen to immediately. Oh, I apologize. This clearly isn't the time. No, and now that my surgeon was sent away, I haven't anyone to help me. Oh, good idea, Matthew. Captain, we happen to have among us the finest surgeon practicing in these waters. If you like, we could fetch her for you. Oh, please do, and hurry. Aye, aye, Captain. Surgeon Rivers at your service. Excellent, Dr. Rivers. Thank you for your help. You may use the previous surgeon's tool set. Ah, yes. Do you happen to have anything to clean the tools before I begin? Clean the tools? You're an odd one. There should be some fresh water with the food stock on deck. And I am happy to pay you for your services, of course. go. Well, here's the food stock the captain mentioned. 
There's got to be some alcohol or something in here that I can use to clean the surgical tools. Let's dig in. bottle of rum. Aha! This rum from the food stock will do nicely as a substitute disinfectant. Let me just do a little swabbing, me mateys, and I'll conduct a procedure, and then hopefully you can sweet talk our way onto the captain's crew. Well, the procedure's finished, and the captain is just waking up now. I snuck a little bit of oral anesthetic into his shots of rum. He should feel pretty good right now. Dr. Rivers, I'm ready for the procedure. <clears throat> procedure. We're all finished, Captain. It went splendidly. Was... What's that, you say? Hey, my tooth is gone. How'd you do that? I didn't feel a thing. It's a miracle! You're hired! Hired? You mean to be on your crew? Because it just so happens we're looking for a ship to take us to Tortuga. Well, my crew is departing imminently for the West Indies. Are you experienced sailors? We know the ropes, and we're open to trimming our sails to adapt ourselves to your leadership. Say, I like the cut of your jib. It's a deal. And here, Privateer Matthew, you'll need a uniform. Matthew, this is so exciting. We succeeded in joining Captain Shadrach's crew aboard the HMS Highmore. Yes, and now we're on our way to Tortuga to stop the Egyptian trading company from winning the auction and taking control of the Atlantic trade routes. Once that's done, the Ptolemies will no longer rise to power and the timeline should be restored to its original state. We've got a month before the auction and while the ship has, has a few stops to make along the way, we'll still make it in time. Matthew, we've got to stay alert. I mean, what if we run into pirates? Then we'll blow them down and send them to Davy Jones's locker. Zara, I'm serious. It's one thing to talk our way past Soviet spies or Roman guards, but pirates? Captain Shadrach and his crew are very capable, not to mention we aren't new to the danger game ourselves. We'll be fine. I hope you're right. Jack, let's just try to relax and follow the captain's orders. Have an orange or something. You don't want to get scurvy. Well, Matthew, let's peel ourselves an orange and settle in. We're on our way to Tortuga. Sorry, guys. Film time ran out of room. So we open another dog shop. Or pet shop, rather. Alpaca, shark, and chameleon. Nah, I'm alright. And that is August 8th, which is another Thursday. So... That's gonna do for this case. Two new ones. Let's 
four new ones. How about five new ones? Now well, I got four. Okay, that'll do. And I'll see you guys for Case 22 on August 8th. So for now, this is Matthew. See you again.